Vintage radio related item with little known facts or lore. The category of this topic is 1920s American made broadcast receiver. A Lawrence M. Cockaday designed receiver circa 1923 24. For many years, the Lawrence M. Cockaday circuit that received quite a bit of press in 1923 24 fascinated me. I never did come across one until just a couple of years ago. The circuit in construction certainly is unconventional looking and has often taken a lot of criticism. I hope to try the circuit for myself. In an estate sale was this really tidy looking one tube outfit. It appears to have been assembled in strict accordance with several construction articles of the day. The only downside to this little set was that the cockaday coil set was heavily coated with what seemed to be a mixture of shellac and varnish. It was embedded with coal dust and looked downright ugly. This year I decided to take it apart and try to flush the windings with mineral spirits and alcohol. I could not use lacquer thinner because the paper coil forms are painted with black lacquer. I had only moderate success in cleaning after multiple attempts. The set uses two Allen Bradley brand compression type carbon disc pile resistors mounted to the front panel. One for filament voltage control called a Bradley Ohm and a multi megohm unit called a Bradley Leak for the detector grid bias resistor. It might look as if there is a missing grid leak resistor across the fixed capacitor highlighted by the red arrow, but the circuit does not use a multi megohm resistor across this capacitor. But these grid leak resistor clips were commonly supplied riveted across this particular value capacitor. The Bradley leak bias resistor is connected between the tube grid and one side of the filament. So time to power the set up. It works, but it is deaf as a box of rocks. My Heathkit CR1 crystal set outperforms it much better. This set tunes just like it should. There are no high resistance connections, no shorted windings. What the heck is going on? The answer seems to be in one vintage article I found. It makes it clear that the coils are not supposed to be shellacked or varnished. It states that it will change the self capacity of the coils and significantly lower the efficiency. And boy does it ever. Speculation time. These little outfits were made from mail order knockdown kits or assembled from parts bought at the local radio shop or five and dime store. You could wind your own coil, but the bank winding technique would have been intimidating for many novice constructors. There was money to be made by small job shops in making these coil sets for the wholesalers and retailers. These coil sets did not necessarily come directly from Cockaday. Why is this Cockaday coil set wound on black lacquered paperboard tubing? It should have been on plain paper tubing or maybe hard rubber or Bakelite tubing. Maybe a job shop thought the coil set might look more marketable if a cheap pasteboard paper tube were given a shot of black lacquer paint. This could have been their clever way to avoid having to use more expensive hard rubber or Bakelite tubing, if they did not know about the admonishment of Lawrence Cockaday to not coat the coils. Then they compounded the problem by giving the coil a shellac coat as well. It could be that this particular set never worked worth a tinker's dam. 